What really happened to Humpty? From the Files of a Hard-Boiled Detective by Joe Dumpty as told to Jeannie Franz Ransom Illustrated by Stephen Axelson Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty was pushed. At least I think so. Who am I? I'm Joe Dumpty, Humpty's younger brother. You probably haven't heard of me. I was never mother's favorite. Mother Goose, that is. Ever since she became police chief Goose, she thinks I'm just stirring up trouble with my detective business. Yes, Mother Goose always liked Humpty best. He's such a good egg. That's why I think it's a crime that he fell off the wall. He's been sitting up there for, for as long as I can remember with no problems whatsoever. Until that awful scramble up day. It was a picture book perfect morning. The old woman with her shoe had just dropped off her kids at the Jack and Jill daycare center. Three little pigs were playing the finishing touches on their latest house. Humpty was sitting on the wall. I wish I'd stop to crack a few jokes with my brother, but it was Humpty's first week as captain of our new neighborhood watch program. I didn't want to distract him. Besides, it was almost nine, and I had to get to work. I made a quick stop and ran to a little red riding hood. The muffin man scrambling to fill a big order, Red said. I can't even buy one lousy muffin for my grandmother. She sniffed loudly and stopped off in a huff. With my espresso in hand, I headed to the office. As I opened my office door, the phone rang. It was Little Miss Muffet. Joe, something's happened to Humpty. I raced to a wall. Miss Muffet was there, cell phone in hand. I called 911, she sobbed. I looked at my brother. He wasn't making a sound. Whoever did this was going to fry. I walked back around the wall, and that's when I saw it. Something shiny was tucked under Miss Muffet. She was on the phone, so I didn't bother asking if I could look under her tuffet. I just did. It was a pair of binoculars. Not just any binoculars. These puppies were official binoculars of a neighborhood watch program. Humpty had been showing them off ever since he became captain. What are you doing with those? Muffy asked. Grabbing the binoculars, I was just about to ask her the same thing when all the king's sources and all the king's men arrived. He couldn't put Pumpty together again, so he scooped it up and rushed to the hospital. What's the story? I asked Muffy. I wanted some answers, Muffy sighed. I was just shooting the breeze with Humpty, waiting for Spire, when he was letting me try his binoculars. Suddenly, this Humpty Pumpty wig blew him right off the wall. Police Chief Goose pulled up in her big honking cruiser. I was after three pigs, she apologized. The wind we had this morning blew down their new house. I just told Joe that the wind made Humpty fall, Muffy said. I I made Humpty fall, said a small voice made out of nowhere. <laughs> it's my fault. Spider said, dropping down from a tree. I was rushing to get here, down here by nine this morning, my usual time, when his puff of wind pushed me straight toward Humpty. I must have scared him, because the next thing I knew, Humpty was on the ground. I zipped him, but I knew I had to fess up. Humpty was my friend. My brother wasn't a friend of anything. That's why I was a perfect neighborhood watch captain. What happened to Humpty was your fault, Spider, I said. It wasn't anybody's fault, Muffy chimed in. It was an accident. Agreed, Chief Goose said. Go to a hospital, Joe, she told me. I'll write up an accident report. Accident report? No way! But Chief, hum but Chief 
Hope these big sale will offer you some foul wobbles. Said the first week he's neighborhood watch captain, he suddenly falls off. I think they will pick house blood down. Coincidence? I don't think so. Chief Goose sighed. Okay, Joe, said so Humpty Joe Brother, I'll give you five of Fox to play detective. Don't have anything by then. I buy that accident report. I didn't have much time. I hurried to a hospital. Thanks to a miracle of modern technology, combined with some nifty techniques, the doctors discovered when Jack fell down and broke his crown. Humpty was on the mend, but he didn't remember things. I need him streets and question a few characters myself. My first stop was for beers. I rang the doorbell three times and when I about to give up when the door opened to reveal a bear foot. I was expecting a bear foot. <laughs> Get it? I showed the blonde my badge and asked about the bear's whereabouts. I'm house sitting, she said yawning. Late night, I asked. Early morning. Some dogs started telling and woke me up. How early, I probed. 9 a.m., she said. But now that I'm awake, welcome in for support. I hate you to tell her no. But I was on clock. And that clock was ticking. Next house I visited belonged to the only dog owner in our neighborhood, Old Mother Hubbard. They were a puppet been howling this morning, Miss H said. I gave my dog to Farmer Rodell last week. He needed help with his sheep. And unlike mine, his cupboard was never bare. It shook her head sadly. I told her about Humpty. I would have done anything to Humpty. Not even to feed my poor dog. You should talk to my neighbor, Miss Sage Chad. She seemed to be in a hurry this morning. Chicken Little answered the door looking more nervous than usual. Am I in just a trouble? I played it cool. You tell me, I said, keeping a close eye on her in case you try to fly the coop. It was all about what happened this morning. It's not my fault, Chicken Little said. You know what happened this morning? Morning? I mean, you know what happened this morning? Of course I know, she shouted. Sky fell, I didn't want anyone. I learned to keep my beak shut. I didn't fall this morning, I said. Humpty did. For a surprised look, I knew that she was innocent. He's going to be okay, I said. I meant, he's going to be okay, I said. I've got that egg I got on my own. She got a little sniffed. I need a tender chicken tissue. Oh, well, tell me where you were around nine, I said. I was on my motor pail walk. She answered, I just passed Buffy and helped you a wet towel overhead. Uh. And the next thing I knew, the sky, I mean, Humpty was falling. I ran straight home. Was Humpty sitting on the wall when he saw him? Yes, but Buffy wasn't there or something. She a little pause. That's funny. She's usually, usually taking it in a crazy way. Funny indeed. As I left my friend clucking to herself, and scanning the sky, I heard a commotion coming from a pig's house. What well, was left of it, anyways? Puff, 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 puff. I need more exercise, I thought. As I raced across the field, how many times have I heard people say that today? Not more exercise part, but huff, puff part, as in a huffy, puffy wind. From a pig flying over, of all things, a cell phone. I thought everyone had one of these on these days. Apparently not. Okay, guys, hand it over, I said. Whose phone is this? We don't know, the pig said. We found this morning after our house blew down. Just when the phone rang. Actually, it howled. Who was... Had a howl for a ringtone, guessed the disguised by voice. Yo, I growled. I got a binocular voice phone. Or the sound of the phone said, Now I want my yummy mom muffin. Yeah, I deal. Remember, we have a wall in five minutes. Nine minutes will be five o'clock. Yikes! I called Chief Goose and told her to meet me at the wall. Goose rang up. The rest of that no one else could buy. The odds that didn't come from a dog. The huffy puppy win! The odds match with binoculars at the hood. Bad, but why? I had a hunch. The girl was at a wall with binoculars in hand. She didn't look too happy to see me. Expecting someone else? I asked. 
something big and bad perhaps? She's expecting me! How will Big Bad Wolf as he jumped out and grabbed the binoculars? Where are my muffins, Speed Muffy? I'm sick of cursing way. Sorry, doll. Plans changed. Grab, Wolf. You pushed Humpty off the wall, I said. I'm telling Chief Goose. I wasn't at the wall this morning. But you were at the pig south, I said, showing Wolf his phone. I pulled out of her house. You got Humpty. Too. You guess you want a scrambled egg with your bacon. Wolf just wants the binoculars, Buffy cried. He promised me some yummy, yummy muffins. If I got the broom, he no one's supposed to get hurt. Now nobody else will. If you give my if you give me my phone, Joe, and get out of my way, Wolf snarled. My what big TP at? I thought. Where is Chief Goose? Hold it! Shrieked Spider. Talk about wrapping up a cake. What's going on here? Chief Goose had arrived. It seems that the howling wind this morning was actually blowing down the pig's house. House. And Humpty along with it. I told the Chief. That's my theory anyway. What about Muffy? Chief asked. Actually, it's a conspiracy theory. I said, we'll post little, little Miss Muffins in exchange for Humpty's binoculars. Binoculars? Humpty... Couldn't see Wolf blow down a pig's house. Apparently, Wolf also tried to blow down the muffin man's shop unless he got free muffins, Chief Goose said. The guys had been hiding in a sack of sugar all day. Sweet, Wolf snarled. Muffy glared at him. I won't have helped you if I knew if I know the truth. Humpty was my friend. I'll probably never speak to me again. I could always call for my cell to apologize, I told her. Your trail cell, that is. Why are you doing it, Wolf? I asked. I'm bad, shrugging my shoulder, hugging your shoulders. It's my middle name. I hear you, Joe, Chief Goose said. You're all right. I have to help you really was a crime. You're afraid to trust your guy again with problem of this. I'm proud of you, Joe. I admit, and... I was proud of me too. And and of my brave friend Spider, in fact. Spider's the neighborhood watch Captain while Humpty's healing. As for me, I have plenty of cases to solve. Dozens of them. In fact, we're, we're on the street is by the dish ran away with a spoon, and then there's my friend Bo. Bo Peep, that is. That dame keeps me in business. Now, if I were a sheep, where would I go? The end.